and we're going to move on to the next thing we got on the docket. Getting kind of into some football now to end the show with our last two topics. And Brandon, the first one, we got to talk about these Washington Huskies, a Washington team that I haven't asked him why, but I know Sean is a fan of the wall. He's, he's got his Notre Dame fighting Irish. He's got his Yukon Huskies and he's got his Washington Huskies. I didn't ask him why he's a fan. I never got that answer from him, but you sent me a, a tweet and I can't remember who it was from, but basically it was a college football prediction and whoever it was had Washington in it. And you said to me, where the hell did Washington come from? Could they be a playoff sleeper? You know, I, I still remember, I still remember that tweet and it was someone who was on the, uh, Paul Feinbaum show. And I looked at that and that's why I sent it to you because you see LSU, I think it was Clemson, somebody else. I, I can't think of who it was. I'm going to look it up. And Washington. And I looked at that and I go, then I look back up and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is sleepers. It can't be sleepers because one of them is. There's only four of them. Yeah. Well, one's Clemson. The other one's LSU. They're not going to be sleepers. I couldn't believe it. So I sent it over to you. I think you are interested in it as well, and clearly you are and were because here we're talking about it now, but... Brad Edwards. At J. Brad Edwards was on the Paul Feinbaum show, and he said LSU, Clemson, OU, which Oklahoma, and then UW, which is Washington. Well, I think that the interesting thing here is that what Washington has is is a big, powerful factor. <laughs> they are a sleeper, and they have sleepers mm-hmm. all over their team. They probably have one of the best defenses and will have one of the best defense, if not the best, in the Pac-12. You know that conference that no one watches because they're asleep. <laughs> well, you're asleep, right? <laughs> Too tired. But... Uh, I think that it's it's really very interesting and a, definitely a team to to keep a close watch on. But there's always so many of these types of teams mm-hmm. in college football each year. It's hard to pick out the best one or the top one. But this is definitely one up there in the top sleepers that could break out category. The Washington Huskies could be one of those. Well, and I mean, this is also a team that, I mean, I'll be honest, last year with Washington, I kind of lost my way with them. But in 2013 and 14, I kind of knew how good they were those seasons. In 2013, they were a nine-win team going to the uh, Craft Fight Hunger Bowl, beating BYU. But I knew how good they were because second game into the season, They played Illinois at Soldier Field and completely dominated. I know it was only a 10-point victory, but they completely dominated Illinois at Soldier Field in Chicago. And then the next year, that 2014 season, an 8-6 and year, they lost to Oklahoma State in the Cactus Bowl. But I knew that they were good because they had played my Fighting Illini the third game that season in, uh, what is it, CenturyLink? That's where the Seattle Seahawks play. Yeah. They played in Century Link and beat us 44 to 19. So I kind of knew that they were like last year I kind of lost my way because they were the Washington Huskies of the Pac-12 and if I was going to watch the Pac-12 it was the Trojans, the Ducks, the Cardinal and this is a team that I look at the Pac-12 and I think if this is a year to strike this is the one for Washington, because when I look at the Pac-12, and I know that when we get to July, we're going to do our full conference previews for each of the Power Fives, but you kind of look at just their division, the North. Oregon, are they going to, like, what What do we expect from them this year? They weren't that good last year. They got a new quarterback coming in. You've got, I mean, Cal's all right. I mean, I don't expect much out of Oregon State or Washington State, the only one they have to really contend with is Stanford. That's it. 
And basically, Stanford to me is just Christian McCaffrey. That's all it is this year because Mike Hogan's not there. They're going to have a new quarterback coming in. So to me, the North, if they can say, hey, we'll be kings of the North this year, they could win the Pac-12 North and go to the Pac-12 title game. Then it gets interesting because then they may have to play some developed teams in the Trojans that I think are going to be a lot better this year. And, oh, could you imagine if Washington won the North and then had to play Jim Mora and Rosen, Josh Rosen, in the Pac-12 title game? Because I think UCLA is going to be good this year. Oh, absolutely, especially with Rosen to see how much better he gets mm-hmm. in his progression along the way. I, I absolutely see him doing much better than what he did last year. And last year, you know, I think for a a rookie, for a young and uh, he did a pretty good job. So, yeah, Washington, the the Huskies, they, they pose an interesting topic of discussion. That's for sure. I think that they, they have a chance. They have the ability. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. They have a running game, I think, that is going to be, I, I shouldn't say vastly underrated because mm-hmm. it's not going to be vastly underrated, but I should say that they're going to have an opportunity to be much better than I think what people think. You look at Miles Gaskin in the running game, a kid who, well, ranked 11th among Power 5 running backs with 200 or more carries in yards after contact per rush and 12th in yards per rush. So, not bad. Not bad. Uh, they've, they've got pieces. Can they put it together? Well, yeah, that's going to be the big kind of a question to me. I think they can put the pieces together. And, I mean, I look at their schedule for this year, and, yeah, they got to play most of the North, but – they open they open up their schedule against Rutgers, Idaho, and Portland State. Can you say win, win, win? Like, don't even watch those games. They're going to be cupcake cakewalks. Then they get Arizona, and I look at their schedule right now, and I mean, Arizona they can win, Oregon State they can win, Utah they can win, Cal they could win, Arizona State, Washington State. That gives them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine wins right there. That means the only games that they got to kind of get through, home game against Stanford, good thing it's at home. Then you play, yeah, Oregon on the road. But like I said, Oregon's, I don't think they're the same Oregon of two years ago in Mark Helfrich's first year. So you could maybe win that game. The big game to me is November 12th when you got to play USC. But good thing it's at home. So you're getting a lot of these key games at home. Absolutely. Whenever you're able to get one of these one of these big games at home uh, behind a, a huge huge uh, crowd playing in front of the home fans that's that's big that's big and I I don't know you know I, I am still trying to grasp the whole the Washington Huskies could be the mm-hmm. team this year out of the pac 12 because that's not something that, I would have ever been thinking coming into the season. I, I just I wouldn't have been looking at them. I would have been looking at your typical teams mm-hmm. that you look at in the Pac-12. Well, and the one thing I think that this season, like you brought up the run game, to me I think this season's all going to revolve around Jake Browning because him coming in, he's a freshman last year, coming in as a sophomore. What kind of improvements are you going to make into your sophomore year. And I'm going to give you two quarterbacks, and we're going to play this game. I'll read you stat one of quarterback A, then I'll read you the stats of quarterback B. I know this is going to be an easy one where I know you're going to pick the one, but I'll tell you the point of this when I tell you. Here's quarterback A. You'll tell me the point of it when you tell me? When I tell you afterwards. But (laughs) here's quarterback A. You ready? A completion percentage of 63.3. 2,955 yards, an average of 8 yards per catch, 16 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, quarterback rating of 139.7. Let that sit in for a second. You ready for quarterback B? Yeah. A 60% completion percentage, 3,670 yards, 
an average of 7.5 per completion, 23 touchdowns, 11 INTs, 134.3 quarterback rating. Who are you taking, quarterback A or quarterback B? B. You took Josh Rosen over Jake Browning. And I knew you were going to take Josh over Jake. However, to me, I feel like if Browning could have those kind of numbers, if he could be the Josh Rosen for the Huskies, this team's going to the Pac-12 title game. Like, just cakewalk right to it. Because to me, I feel like this season could be, we are talking Josh Rosen, Jake Browning, who's the best quarterback in the Pac-12. And they're both sophomores. They're both coming in from their freshman season, both from California. Josh is from Manhattan Beach. Jake is from uh, Garnet Bay. I think I said that right. Granite Bay. Granite Bay. That's how you say it. I I am more interested, I think, as to what Josh Rosen will be doing this year. Than Jake Browning. Uh, than Jake Browning. Uh, that's just me personally. Uh, <laughs> I will be following Rosen, I think, a little bit more. On Browning shows me uh, a little bit uh, more of a spark. But I want you guys to down below, we're going to wrap up this kind of discussion. We got one more thing to talk about. So I want you guys who are listening down below, let us know what you guys think of the Washington Huskies. Could they be a college football playoff sleeper in the year 2016? 